Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the main features of heuristics as well as meta heuristics. So, let's get started. In the previous section we have been discussing brute force search and we have come to the conclusion that okay, it's going to find the best solution possible, but on the other hand it's going to be very very slow even in two or three dimensions. Okay, if we have a one dimensional function that we would like to optimize, so we would like to find the minimum or the maximum value, then brute force search is going to be fine. But usually we would like to solve problems with lots of lots of dimensions, for example in probability theory or statistics or something like that, then we are not able to use brute force search because it's going to be very slow. Then we have considered hill climbing. What's the problem with hill climbing? That it usually finds the local optimum instead of the global one. So maybe we can do better and basically this is why heuristics and meta heuristics have came to be. So what about heuristics? We know that several problems are very hard to solve exactly. These are the so-called MP-complete problems. So most of the graph algorithms fall into this category, such as the Hamiltonian cycle problem. So we would like to find a closed cycle in a graph in the sense that we would like to visit every vertex exactly once. The traveling salesman problem is basically very similar to the Hamiltonian cycle problem because it's like we would like to visit every city on a given map and we would like to end up at the same city from where we have started. And it's very important that we would like to make sure that the route we take is going to be the shortest path possible. This is the so-called traveling salesman problem or the so-called coloring problem. All of these problems are very complex. These are the so-called MP problems, non-deterministic polynomial problems. And the solution is that we don't want to get an exact solution. We just want to end up with an approximation of the solution. Why is it good? Because it is quite a good solution. Okay, it's not the best, but it is approximately the best. And on the other hand, it's going to be very fast. This is what we have been discussing for brute force search that okay it's going to find the best solution possible but it's not going to be fast, it is very very slow. Heuristic algorithm is going to find approximately the best solution, not the best one but approximately the best solution and on the other hand it's going to be fast. So heuristics are problem specific approximating solutions. It's very important that we know the underlying problem and we are going to construct the heuristic algorithm accordingly. We have already considered a heuristic algorithm. This is the so-called A star search that we know for certain that we are going to do a search algorithm and we would like to find the shortest pass on a given graph. So we know the underlying problem and we use some feature of that given problem. For example, chess or tic-tac-toe fell into this category and that's why the solution is going to be alpha beta pruning. We are going to consider it in the next section. So solving tic-tac-toe and chess with the help of alpha beta pruning is a heuristic algorithm. We know the feature of the given problem and that's why we are able to construct the problem specific algorithm, the so called alpha beta pruning in this case. What about meta heuristics? The same is true for meta heuristics as well, what we have discussed for heuristics. So we want to get a good guess of the solution, but we would like to get it quite fast. So that's why we are not able to use the brute force search because it's not going to be fast. But these algorithms are problem independent. It's very important that we don't know the underlying features of that given problem. We know nothing about the problem we want to solve. It's kind of a black box method. For example, genetic algorithms, simulated annealing or particles form optimization fell into this category. 
And okay, what does it mean that we know nothing about the concrete problems or it is problem independent? It means that, for example, we are able to solve N Queen's problem with the help of genetic algorithms. We are able to optimize the given function. So we are able to find the minimum or the maximum value. We are able to solve graph algorithms such as the traveling salesman problem. And we are able to use the same approach for all these problems. We are not able to use alpha beta pruning, for example, for solving traveling salesman problem because alpha beta pruning is used for chess or tic-tac-toe. That's why alpha beta pruning is a heuristic algorithm. Genetic algorithms, simulated annealing or particles form optimizations, on the other hand, are meta heuristic algorithms. We have the base theory and we are able to use it for several problems. Genetic algorithms can be used for solving the traveling salesman problem. But for example, we are able to use genetic algorithms to calculate the edge weights for neural networks. And basically genetic algorithms are very, very important in this aspect. We usually optimize and calculate the edge weights for neural networks with the help of genetic algorithms. And if the neural network is good, then we are able to approximate, for example, stock market values, or we are able to recognize faces. Neural networks is a very, very important technology and algorithm. Most of the great companies relies heavily on neural networks, even in 2016, such as Tesla, Google, Amazon.com, and so on. So these meta heuristics algorithms are quite important and it's quite essential to see the difference between heuristics and meta heuristics. So for heuristics, heuristic algorithms are not generic. We use some underlying feature of that given problem. For example, we know that for chess or for tic-tac-toe, we are able to construct a tree-like structure and we are able to get rid of some branches. So that's why it is a heuristic algorithm, the so-called alpha beta pruning or the minimax algorithm, because we know for certain that the given problem is going to have a tree-like structure. Meta heuristics, on the other hand, are quite generic. We do not use some underlying feature of that given problem. And that's why genetic algorithms or simulated annealing can be used. No matter that we would like to find the maximum value of a given function, or we would like to train a neural network with the help of these meta heuristic algorithms. So that's all about heuristics and meta heuristics. Thanks for watching.